Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our sixth lesson on the third topic of Form 4, which is called Floating and Sinking. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that your greatest pain becomes your greatest source of strength. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at upthrust and uh, relative density. So let's start by highlighting the formulas that involve calculation of relative density, both for solids and liquids. So relative density of a solid is given by the weight of the solid divided by the upthrust of that particular solid in water, which can be abbreviated as relative density in solid is equal to the weight of the solid divided by the upthrust of that particular solid when immersed in water. Then relative density of a liquid is given by upthrust in the liquid divided by upthrust in water, which can be abbreviated as relative density of a liquid is equal to upthrust in the liquid divided by the upthrust of that particular uh, body in water. So let's look at an example involving calculation of relative density in a solid. So our first example reads that a solid uh, mass 0.8 kg suspended by a string is totally immersed in water. If the tension in the string is 4.8 Newton, calculate part A the volume of that particular solid. So this is just um, a diagram showing or simply uh, uh, that is a sketch of this particular question. We have a solid of mass 0.8 kg which is suspended on this particular string then you can see it is totally immersed in water. So the tension in the string is 4.8 uh, Newton. Then of course we are also given the mass of the solid as 0.8 kg. So part A they want us to find the volume of the solid. So we'll simply apply the two laws, that is the law of flotation and the Achmed's principle. So for us to find the volume of the solid, we must first of all find the volume of the water that will be displaced. Because remember, because this particular solid is totally immersed, it simply means that the volume of the water displaced will be equal to the volume of the solid, since the solid is totally immersed in that particular uh, water. Remember, the space that the solid occupies will simply be equal to the space that has been left by the displaced water. That is why the volume of the solid will be equal to the volume of the water that will be displaced as a result of totally immersing that particular solid in the water. So for us to find the volume of the solid, we must first of all find the volume of the water that was displaced. So for us to find the volume of the water displaced, we need first of all to find the weight of the water that was displaced. Remember from the law of flotation, which stated that a floating body displaces its own weight of the fluid in which it floats, it simply we can simply conclude that the weight of the solid must be equal to the weight of the water that it will displace. That is courtesy of the law of flotation. Then from the Achmed's principle, which stated that when a body is totally or partially massed in a fluid, it experiences an upthrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. It simply means that upthrust must be equal to the weight of the water that was displaced because the fluid being displaced in this case is the water. Then we know that to find the upthrust, we simply take the weight of the body in air minus the weight of the body when it is uh, immersed or submerged in water or in that particular fluid. In this case, the solid, of course, is just a solid mass. So because the weight of the water displaced is equal to upthrust, it simply means that the weight of the water displaced will be equal to the weight of the solid in air minus the weight of the solid when totally immersed in water. So weight in air will simply be equal to the actual weight of that particular solid, which can be given by mass times gravity. So the weight in air will be equal to the mass of the solid in air, which was 0.8 kg times gravity, because remember weight is given by mg. Then the weight of the solid when totally immersed in water, we are given as 4.8 Newton. Therefore, 0.8 times 10, you will simply obtain uh, 8 uh, Newton. So if you take 8 Newton, minus the weight of the solid when immersed in water, which is 4.8 Newton. So 8 minus 4.8, you'd simply obtain 3.2 Newton. So that is the weight of the water that was displaced, which is also equal to the upthrust, which is also equal to the weight of the solid. That is courtesy of the Ahmed's principle and the law of flotation. Now that we have the weight of the water displaced, we can easily find the volume of the water that was 
displaced because we know that because the solid was totally immersed in water it simply means that the volume of the solid must be equal to the volume of the water that was displaced so the weight of the water displaced is equals to rho vg that is density of the water displaced times volume of the water displaced multiplied by gravity so because it is the water in this particular case then we know that the density of fresh water is a thousand kilogram per cubic meter we can simply use this particular formula to find the volume of the water that was displaced so the weight of the water displaced which is equal to upthrust we have already computed it as 3.2 newton therefore 3.2 newton is equal to density of the water displaced the density of fresh water is usually a thousand kilogram per cubic meter volume of the water displaced is the unknown in this particular case times gravity on earth which is usually 10 newton per kilogram so if i make volume of water displaced to be subject of the formula i'll simply divide both sides of this equation by a thousand kilogram per cubic meter multiplied by 10 newton per kilogram therefore the volume of the water displaced will be equal to 3.2 newton divided by a thousand kilogram per cubic meter multiplied by 10 newton per kilogram which gives us 0 0.00032 cubic meter so because the solid was totally immersed in water we'll simply conclude that the volume of the solid must be equal to the volume of the water that was displaced of course which is equal to 0 0.00032 cubic meter so remember the volume of the solid will only be equal to the volume of the water displaced if that particular solid was totally immersed in the fluid or in the water otherwise if it is partially immersed then the volume of the fluid displaced will just be equal to the volume of that particular solid that is submerged within that particular fluid or the water but for this case because the solid was totally immersed in water therefore the volume of the solid must be equal to the volume of the water displaced remember volume is the amount of space occupied by a body therefore if you are totally immersing a solid in water it simply means that the volume or the space that will be displaced by water must be equal to the space that will be occupied by that particular solid therefore the volume of the solid is equal to volume of water displaced which is equal to 0 0.00032 cubic meter then part b we are asked to find the relative density of the solid we have just said that relative density for solids can be given by weight of the solid divided by the upthrust in water therefore relative density of solid is equal to weight of a solid divided by the upthrust of that particular solid when immersed in water so the weight of the solid of course is given by mg we are given the mass of the solid as 0.8 kilogram therefore weight of the solid is equal to mass times gravity which is 0.8 kg times 10 newton per kilogram so 0.8 by 10 you will obtain 8 newton then to find the upthrust in water we have just said that uh, from the Archimedes principle and the law of flotation we have just concluded that the weight of the solid must be equal to the weight of the water displaced then from Archimedes principle uh, that when a body is partially or totally massed in a fluid it experiences an upthrust which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced it simply means that the upthrust will be equal to the weight of the water that was displaced because the water is the fluid in this particular case remember we said that a fluid can either be a liquid or a gas therefore upthrust in water will just be equal to the weight of the water that was displaced that is courtesy of the Archimedes principle and because we already have the weight of the water displaced which was 3.2 newton we'll simply substitute it here therefore relative density of the solid will be given by the weight of the solid which is 8 newton divided by the upthrust of that particular solid in water which is 3.2 newton so 8 newton divided by 3.2 newton you will simply obtain the relative density of the solid as 2.5 then remember relative density is a ratio therefore the units cancel out that is why relative density is just a constant value without any units next we look at our second example which reads that the following results were obtained in an experiment so weight of the cube in air was 0 0.5 newton weight of the cube completely immersed in oil was 0 0.46 newton then the weight of the cube completely immersed in water was 0 0.44 newton so we are asked to calculate the upthrust of the cube when completely immersed in the oil so the upthrust of the cube in oil will simply be equal to the weight of the cube in air minus the weight of the cube when totally or when immersed in that particular oil so we are told that the weight of the cube in air which is the true weight of that particular cube was 0 0.5 newton then the weight of the cube when immersed in oil was 0 0.46 newton from this particular question here 
So the difference between the weight of the cube in air and the weight of the cube when immersed in oil will give us the upthrust of the cube in that particular oil, which is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.46 newton, which gives us 0 0.04 newton. Then part B, they want us to find the upthrust of the cube when completely immersed in water. So the upthrust of the cube in water will simply be giving, given by the weight of the cube when immersed in air minus the weight of the cube when immersed in water. So weight of the cube in air is 0 0.5 newton minus weight of the cube when totally immersed in water is 0 0.44 newton. So the difference gives us the upthrust of the cube in water which is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.44 newton which gives us 0 0.06 newton. Then part C, they want us to find the relative density of the oil. Now remember, oil is a liquid. So we gave a formula for uh, that is on how to find the relative density for liquids, whereby we said that relative density for liquids will be given by the upthrust in the liquid divided by the upthrust in water, for which in this particular case, the liquid is actually the oil. Therefore, relative density in the liquid or in the oil will simply be given by the upthrust in the oil divided by the upthrust in water. So because we have already computed the value of the upthrust in uh, the oil, which is actually 0 0.04 Newton, we'll simply divide by the upthrust in water, which we have already computed as 0 0.06 Newton. Therefore, if you take 0 0.04 Newton divided by 0 0.06 Newton, you'll obtain 0 0.6667. Uh, Again, relative density is a ratio. That is why it doesn't have any units. So you simply record your answer correct to four significant figures. Remember when a zero is to the left hand side of a number, it is never significant. Zero is only significant if either it is to the right hand side of a number or it exists between two and zero digits. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that your greatest pain becomes your greatest source of strength. So the quote is encouraging us to impress pain in life because it is the only way through which we can develop both our physical and mental strength. Recall that the strongest people in the world are those who have mastered the art of, of overcoming the greatest challenges or pro problems in the world. Therefore, pain is an essential component or ingredient for one's greatness in life. And lastly, remember that your level of success will always be directly proportional to the magnitude of the challenges or problems that you solve. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Thank you for the positive comments. I know I've been silent for some time, but we are finally back. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for understanding. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.